I've just downloaded the Australian Computing Academy's new DT at home activity, Cellular Automoji. This activity is going to get you making patterns from simple rules. And the patterns themselves can be very simple, or they can get really quite complex and strangely interesting. Anyway, let's take a look. The activity is based on something called cellular automata, which have been studied by computer scientists since the 1940s. They're deceptively simple, but can lead to surprisingly complicated results. Anyway, we're going to take those ideas and use emoji because they're fun. OK, the first one we're going to take a look at is called pizza time. You start with a grid like this and a simple set of rules. And the rules tell you how to fill each of the squares on the grid. Each row on the grid is called a generation. We filled the first row, the first generation, with clock and pizza emoji. To fill in the second generation, the next row on the grid, well, we need our rules. There's two of them. Here's how they work. Rule number one. Along a generation, if you have pizza, clock, clock, then the square on the next row, the next generation in the middle of those, is a pizza. Rule number two is similar. As you go along, if it's clock, clock, pizza, then the square underneath that in the middle is also a pizza. If neither of these two rules apply, then the square in the next generation row is a clock. Let's go through it step by step and show you how it works. Let's start with this square. Look at the three emoji in the generation above. We have clock, pizza, clock. Now that's neither of the two rules for this game, so that square has to be a clock. Moving to the left, the three emoji above are clock, clock, pizza. Well, that's rule number two, so this square becomes pizza. Left again, the three emoji are clock, clock, clock. Well, that's not a rule, so this square is a clock. Now we've hit the end of the row. The squares above are clock, clock, end of row. What do we do now? Well, here we need another simple rule. We always pretend that off the edge of a row, it's always the base emoji, which in this case is the clock. So all the way down, each generation off the edge, it's a clock. So that means that above this square, we have clock, clock, clock. And that's not one of the rules. And so this square also has to be a clock. OK, going across the other way, we have pizza, clock, clock. So that means that this square, well, that's rule number one. That's got to be a pizza. And then we have clock, clock, clock. Well, that's not one of the rules. So that one's got to be a clock. In fact, if you look at it, it's clocks all the way across. So if you follow all the rules and do each generation carefully, you find that generation four looks like this. So your first test is, what's generation five? Let's get you going. This square has pizza, clock, pizza. Well, that's not one of the rules, so that's going to be a clock. This square has clock, pizza, clock. Well, that's not one of the rules, so that's also a clock. So work your way across, see what you find. Each of the different cellular automoji games that we've given you have slightly different rules, and so they give different patterns as a result. The last one, called Rule 30, is really interesting. This simple set of four rules leads to random, complex, chaotic behavior. And studying cellular automata like Rule 30 has helped scientists and mathematicians study complex, chaotic, real-world behavior, from chemical and biological systems right through to the weather. So have a go, make some patterns, and see if you can come up with your own set of cellular automoji rules. Go and see what worlds you can create.